Hi everybody, welcome back. This is the 10th video in the series how to compose uh, with a particular emphasis in GCSE and A-level music. And what we're going to be looking at today is the development section of our composition. So far we've looked at how to write a melody, how to come up with a melody, um, the rules of melodic motion we need to follow, and how to compose a melody, and how to develop a melody. We've also looked at how modulation works, um, changing key. We've also looked at chord progressions, how to harmonize our melody. We've also looked at things like string quartet features and the use of sonata form in our composition. So there's quite a bit that we've already done. And this part probably is the most fun part, I think, of the composition, where you get to mess around with all of those ideas and put them into different keys and combine them and fragment them and turn them upside down and all sorts of stuff. So that's what we're going to be doing today. So let's jump into our composition. So yeah, this is what we were looking at over the last few videos. This is our first subject. First four bars in red, second four bars in orange, mostly triadic, um, mostly uh, tonic and dominant harmonies. And then the bridge passage begins in bar nine, and that will bring us to the second subject. So the rhythms that we're using for each bar here are basically the same from one bar to the next. There's a couple of variations here and there, a couple of changes, but mostly um, each part does the same thing throughout this entire bridge section. And we've modulated actually here in this bar. This would be our pivot chord. And that brings us into the key of E flat major for the second subject beginning in bar 18. So this is this is the relative major, which is where you would expect to go if you start in a minor key. We started in C minor and its relative major is E flat major. And again, it's very similar um, in terms of structure, four bars ending with an imperfect cadence, another four bars ending with a perfect cadence. So structurally, it's very similar to the first subject, but it's different in terms of key. Um, it's different in terms of the style, I suppose, of the melody. It's a lot more stepwise, lyrical, scalic, using longer note values as opposed to the first subject, which is using quite a few dotted rhythms and triplets and semi-quavers and things. Um, this is a lot more, this is a broader feel to this uh, melody. And that's where we ended here. Okay, so bar 22, 3, 4, bar 25 is as far as we've got. And this is what we're doing today, the development section. So if I zoom in a little so we can read some of these things, um, let's see. Yeah, so taking ideas from our first and second subject, or even the bridge, and treating them to fragmentation, sequences, modulation. If you're not sure what these um, terms mean, there is a video that we looked at this um, melodic development. So I would, I would encourage you to go back and go through that video if you're a little unsure about things like imitation, fragmentation, sequences, all that sort of stuff, um, melodic development. So we could put the first subject into the relative major or the parallel major because our first subject was in C minor. We can put it into a new key just as long as we avoid the tonic key at all costs. So we don't want to go anywhere near C minor in our development section because we'll be coming back to that key quite a lot in our final section. Yeah, our recapitulation. That's where we're going to be coming back to C minor. OK, so we'll avoid the C minor key in our development. We could combine different parts of the first subject with different parts of the second subject and then put all of these combinations into other keys and then treat all of this to sequences or augmentation, diminution, imitation, etc, etc, etc. Some notes will still need to be altered to fit harmonically of other parts. So you'll notice that as we go through this today, that when I copy things from one section to another, I'll still need to fiddle around with some of the notes just to make them fit or anything that sounds a bit unusual. Um, we'll probably have to just alter a few notes here and there. And also something to look at in your development section. Give the second violin, the viola, and especially the cello something more to do. Perhaps the melody could be in the cello for a bit. Um, 
because up until this point, it's really the first violin that's been doing most of the heavy lifting when it comes to melody. So it's nice in your development section to give the other instruments something to do. So what I'm going to do actually is I'm just going to delete most of this. And what I want to do here is come up with some ideas about what I'm going to do in the development section. So the thing that I would like to do um, actually here is explore other keys. Uh, G minor, which is our dominant key. We haven't come across that key yet. We've come across our tonic C minor and it's relative major, E flat major, but we haven't done the dominant key or G minor and we haven't done the subdominant key F minor. So that's what I want to do here. I also want new textures. Um, I was thinking actually of putting in a, a fugue. I usually think of things like this for the development sections, things that we haven't seen in our opening exposition. Um, so our exposition being, of course, um, the entire first subject, the bridge passage and the entire second subject. So everything that we've done so far is the exposition. So there hasn't really been much in terms of very, you know, clear polyphonic textures. It's been a couple of weak counter melodies, counter ideas, but most of the time there is just one strong melody um, in our exposition. So we maybe want to do something that's quite highly um, polyphonic, like a fugue. That would be nice. Um, I want to combine ideas. from the bridge and different halves of each subject. So like maybe that's why I've color coordinated everything up to this point, because I'll know what I'll be developing and what I won't be developing. So maybe I want to develop, say, or take the accompaniment pattern from the beginning here, or maybe take the melody in the first violin from the beginning and combine it with the sort of the last two bars of the first subject and then put all of that into a new key and maybe take the melody and put it into the viola or something, you know, so doing that, but with each part of our exposition. So I could have at any stage four separate things happening simultaneously from different parts of the exposition. So that's what I say. We'll have to mess around with that just to see what it sounds like. Uh, what else could we do? Um, maybe contrast all of this with pure homophonic texture, just completely chordal, in fact. That might be nice. Um, and I also maybe want to get a circle of fifths going. Um, that's just one of these things that exam boards like to see, you know, particular chord progressions. Um, so circle of fifths, maybe some dim diminished chords, um, maybe augmented sixth chords, Neapolitan chords. So if you're a GCSE student, of course, all of this is too advanced. You don't need to put these type of chords in. It might be nice to have a circle of fifths, though, for GCSE. But these guys are definitely more sort of A-level standard, I guess, A2, even like second year A-level, I'd say. Um, but I'll show you how to do them anyway and what they are. Um, I will be making individual small videos in each of these, so um, keep an eye out for that. And what else could we do? Um, well, <laughs> is that enough? <laughs> um, yeah, that'll be enough. <laughs> That's enough to get going. So let's start off then in G minor, I suppose. Um, what could what could it do? G minor in a fugue, yeah, and then give the melody to the viola, so something different to do. So I'm going to maybe just have a look at our first subject then. Maybe have to zoom out a bit. So there's going to be a lot of copy and pasting going on. This is why this is my favorite part because we've kind of done all the hard work of coming up with melodies for the exposition. Now we just have to develop them. So let's see if we take from the second part. I like this counter melody idea that we had. Remember, I was thinking of doing that somewhere in the bridge, but um, I didn't want to introduce new stuff too much in the bridge. There's enough going on. So we can develop this now, this part here. Da, 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 ba, bum. 
Okay, let's just take those two bars like that. But we're now going to put it in to the viola again here. And put it into the key of G minor. So at the moment it's in C. If I drag this guy down to G. I'll need F sharps. So you can see if we're in the key of G minor, I'm going to need to cancel out um, the A flats and introduce um, F sharps as well. Da, da, da. So, ba, 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 ba. And I might want to make this nice and crisp, so maybe just crotchets and make them both staccato again. One of my favorite, it's my favorite articulation, definitely for strings. Just I suppose because it just sounds slightly better, I think, in uh, Muse Score and other programs. Okay, well, I'm not going to actually have anything for the violins because, as I say, they've been doing enough, especially the first violin. So I may want to just make this, um, build this up. Yeah, we'll build it up because everything's been playing, except for the viola, actually. Everything from bar five onwards, everything's been playing non almost nonstop the whole way through. Um, yeah, so we'll build it up and maybe have a new texture rather than these sort of arpeggios um, and scalic ideas in the cello. We'll probably have like some sort of Alberti bass thing. Might be nice. Bum, 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 bum. So let's try that out. Actually, I could. Bum, 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 bum. Yeah, I'm going to take this. Um, just put it here. Drag it down to G. Bum, bum. Bum, 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 bum. Just do that like twice, I suppose. Bum, bum, do, 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 do. Just try and keep everything orange, I suppose. So you can see now that I'm de developing the orange part of our exposition. Um, so maybe if I... Maybe just have us as an ascending sequence rather than the same thing as before. So it went up a third. So we'll go up a third here. Okay. So I might actually have a descending down. I won't do it ascending all the time. So. Da 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 Okay, well, that'll do for now. <laughs> and then I'll bring in the cello. I'm just going to repeat this sort of texture, I suppose, the whole way through. Um, but I'll have to change the chord, so... Da, 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 da. Okay, so it looks like this could be a... a uh, maybe just chord 5, D, F sharp, and A in the key of G minor. So I'm just going to remind myself... <laughs> Because the key signature doesn't have to really change as long as the accidentals show what key we're in. F sharps and A naturals indicate G minor. Bum 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 bum. A natural. We have a rising bass. Da 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 dum, dum dum, dum. Okay, let's have we listen just to these first four bars of our development.
Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's yeah, it's a bit cre it's nice and creepy. <laughs> okay. Now th that's our first part. Now, if you if you've know if you know anything about fugues, you'll know that um, once a piece starts in the key that you want it to start in, in this case G minor, you should have another instrument coming in and imitating this, but at the dominant. So we're going to go from G minor to D minor, the dominant of uh, five away from G. Um, so all we need to do really then is take this and copy it. I'm going to have it up in the second violin. So there's a new thing sort of rising up through the texture each time. So if I just copy that, paste it in here, push it up an octave, that should sound the same. Yeah, it does. But this is going to be in D minor. So let's change that and select this and this. And then move everything um, towards D. It's just thinking, do I have to start it in the tonic here of or the root of this chord? What happens if we move it up? Oh, that's got to be E natural for D minor. Okay, so I've moved a couple of wee things around there, as you can see. Just It's still in the key of D minor, but I'm just now starting on the third of D minor, the F. Yeah, so... Da, 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 da. Yeah, and again, this is probably going to continue but in the key of D minor, so. Okay, let's have a listen to the whole thing so far. I might change some of this around with the cello, um, like that connection between here and this. It's just too much, I think, anyway, of going up just a fifth. Um, so rather than doing that, we might have it. Dum. Or bum, 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 bum. Dum. A natural. Mm, 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 mm. Do, 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 bomb. I can't sing that low. Yeah, just to keep it nice and low because we are the it's gonna the texture is expanding outwards, getting higher in one side, getting lower in the other. Uh yeah, even the repeated note. Well, we actually could just do, 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 yeah, go up as a scale here. So A natural. Yeah, that C sharp will actually sound nice, pulling the ear in towards D. Hopefully, anyway, let's have a listen. <laughs> yeah, okay, so I might have to just change some of this around. Maybe put this down an octave. Yeah, keep it nice and low. Oh, this is too low. If that happens, you know, obviously that's way out of the range of the cello. Um, so maybe um, bum. going upwards again. Yeah. Just keep it an octave higher for now. Might want to change that. Da, 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 da. Yeah. 
da, 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 bum, bum. And then we're going to be going back to G minor. So I might actually, in order to make it easy for me to remember all this, um, just change the bar lines here to say that's the end of this four bar idea. One, two, three, that's the end of this four bar idea. Yeah. So these double lines here will let me know the changes that are coming. Make it easier for copying and pasting stuff as well. Okay. So what is the viola going to do um, when this part comes in? Um, so we've taken stuff from the second part of the first subject. What if we take it stuff from the first part? Um, yeah, da 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 ba 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 we need to move this into the key of D minor. <laughs> um, maybe I don't want those triplets actually against these. I want everything to be sort of nice and, you know, tiptoeing and the triplets to sort of distract from this regular quaver movement. So maybe we'll just keep it as... Yeah. We'll just keep it as quavers as well. Yeah, so it's the same harmony as before, really. I'm just thinking, how are we going to get... Just go up again. <laughs> it's never I've got like a gap like this, like we did with the cello. I just fill it in um, with passing notes. So, well, actually, we'll need a wee chromatic one then. It's an C sharp. What's that sound like? <laughs> That's actually all right. Ba 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 dum. Oh, um, we could actually. Ba 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 bum. Hmm. Actually, it sounded better the other way. Yeah, so I'll do that. Okay, let's listen to the whole thing, see if this builds up. Okay, well, we do need to do something there as well. Um, yeah, maybe come build up to this. Okay, yeah, we'll try that. Always nice to have little sort of scalic runs up to notes if we can manage it. That's nice. Bum, 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 bum. Yeah, so we're going back to G minor here. So that D could just go ba da 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 dum. Ba da 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 dum. Now, how are we going to get into the key of G minor? Because we ended the previous section in <laughs> the key of 
um, E flat major. Um, so we again, like when you're wanting to move from one key into another, it's always best to think of um, for this silent bit here, we could put in like the dominant of G minor if that works, or maybe a Neapolitan or a diminished seventh or an augmented sixth or something, um, something chromatic. Uh, that will get us into the key of G minor. So, because G minor will have E flat major inside of it. You know, that's our chord six. So maybe this could be chord considered as, yes, chord one in the key of E flat major, but also chord six into the key of G minor. And all we need to put in here then would be a D major chord or chord five in our new key of G minor. F sharp, and then that F sharp will have to resolve up to G here. It just has to, it's the leading note. So we will introduce maybe just a little bit in the first vi second violin. So we've got our G, G, B flat, and G. Oh, we do have the D's here anyway in the cello. Okay. And again, keep them staccato. And maybe similarly for... Well, maybe even to stress it a little. Let's see. If we go into articulations, yeah, accent those. Just to make it really strong that we're moving into the... Um, development section and then everything just sort of dies off immediately after that so we could have this yes maybe for tis for sforzando maybe for this and then piano afterwards when we're doing our dynamics let's have a listen anyway to see does that sound halfway decent <laughs> Maybe a bit crisper. Dum, dum, dum. Yeah, maybe we could make them uh, quavers, just as really nice and crisp. Yes, that sounds nice. I just might injured put that as an A. Yeah, because we have our D, F, and A. I don't want two Fs there. So I'm just going to move him to A just to make it um, like a fuller sounding triad there. Okay, I better actually write down what, where I'm taking this stuff from or I'll forget. So this is taken from the first subject second part and it's actually bar from bar five viola and then this is taken oops from the first subject again but the first part violin bar one violin And I'm actually going to make this a little bit wider. There we go. And do the same thing here. Okay. Uh, the next part I was thinking, now that the first violin is going to join in, instead of just building up the fugue even more, we've gone back to we're going back to G minor here. We may want to combine ideas from the bridge and the other subjects. So maybe having four different things here at once. So what have we not <laughs> developed? We haven't taken anything from the bridge yet um, or the second subject. So let's see, maybe the second subject in the bridge. Um, well, that's nice actually. See, da 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 bum 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 bum. Yeah.
Yeah, that's nice. Okay, yeah, maybe taking this idea. But not have it in the violin. Let's move this to the viola. Just have a different sound. And again, it should be... Should be in... Uh, yeah, G minor here. I might change, I might make it a wee bit more, well, we'll see, a bit, bit more stepwise than this. And then something else happens after that. Ba, ba, ba. Uh, let me see. Taking this part. Can put them down. Okay, so we've taken a little bit of um, the second subject, second part, the sort of counter melody idea that was up in the first violins, and we've now put it in the viola, and we've now changed it into G minor and altered a few E notes just to make it a bit more stepwise maybe given the cello um the cello in the fugue it didn't have this yet yeah the viol violas have had it the second violins had it but the the cello hasn't had it so maybe just copy this and put it down in the cello part make it a bit lower though Okay, you can tell there's a couple of wee clashes in here of notes that aren't gelling very well together, but overall, actually, it's going to sound okay. That works out quite well. <laughs> Maybe having the... Instead of having two... Um, B flats here. Maybe have this as the D. Da 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 dum. Ba 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 bum. Mm hmm. D. Octave. Let's have a listen. Hmm. Yeah, I might change some of the rhythms from this part here. Yeah, okay, I better keep track as well of what I'm doing. So I'm just going to change this to orange. I like the, vi uh, the viola. <laughs> Sorry, I like the cello doing what the viola was, d was doing before. Um, But this is taken taken from second subject second idea because i know it is it's green and it's actually from bar 22 the violin part although i'm going to probably change it quite a bit and i may want to actually rather than start with a rest start off with a note as well so maybe the g both g's g's Bum ba 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 bum, ba ba bum. Yeah, maybe going upwards. Da da da. Yeah, I take out these semi quaver rhythms because and when I add four things together, that's just going to sound too complex. It's comp going to be complex enough without adding in, you know, very different rhythms. Yeah, that's nice and punchy. Um, we'll keep that going. 
Okay, so we've now got the second subject, second idea, and first subject, second idea happening simultaneously in a new key, in new instruments. So you can see what I mean by the development section, where you're not really come up with anything new as such. You're taking all the previous ideas, mash them together, collide them together, put them in different keys, put them in different instruments, tweaking a few notes here and there to make it work with each other. Um, so. Well, we haven't done the red part yet. Let's see, can we have like a different color for each line? Um, maybe just the accompaniment. Yeah, bum, 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 yeah. From the cello, except now this is going to be in one of the violins. Um, I'll put it in the second violin, see. Ooh, it's a bit low. Put it up. And then obviously we need to drag this. Um, to the right tonic G that's just too low bum bum See what that sounds like. Um. Bum, bum. Needs to be a G up here for that F sharp to resolve. We need to hit a G. We'll get to that in a minute then. <laughs> um. Okay, let's look at the bridge. Is there anything we can take? In the bridge passage, well, the most obvious thing would be this. Da -da 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 -bum -bum. Okay, let's take him, put him in here. Get rid of all this stuff. Don't, don't need this. Except this is now going to be G, 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 B. Well, those G's are, yeah, maybe up high. G, B, D. Yeah, that's nice. Or even... Can... Yeah, that works. Um, descending sequence, maybe? Yeah, G minor still. So we need A naturals everywhere. Just make sure I haven't missed any. No. Okay. Da 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 dum. D A D F sharp. Yep. Da 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 Well, D, C, C, can we keep going down? Not that far down. Da, da, da. C, <laughs> yeah, that's going to work. I'm just thinking if you're wondering what I'm doing here, I'm thinking of what's going on underneath and trying to make it work with what we have already. to think okay well, well listen to this i'm just thinking what could we do here for the violin and we need something 
different after this. Yeah, because this is very um, complicated texture that we have here. So we, we ended up with something simple at the start and it's gonna, it's built up into something quite complicated. So we may want just, what do we have? Pure homophonic texture, yeah. So like just chords or something here, like that, 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 that. Um, okay. Oh, perfect. Except in G minor. Get rid of this. Move this to G. We've already got the B flat, so. Da 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 bum bum D That should sound halfway decent, let's have a listen. Yeah. Okay. So better write down what we're doing here. Taken from first subject, first part. Oops. And it's actually, what was that? That was bar one cello. And this is taken from the bridge. Taken from bridge. Um, da -da 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 -da. That's the violin. And that was bar nine after the eight bar first subject. Okay. So you can see that this is beginning to come along quite nicely here. And in fact, we've managed to combine everything here. We have purple, we have, <laughs> we have purple, red, green, orange, and blue. Taken from second subject, first part, bar 18, the violin part. Actually, it's violin. Is that violin? more like violin one or two? Because it's very similar. It's more like violin two, actually. Da, 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 bum, bum, bum. Yeah, so violin two, bar eighteen. There we go. Okay, so we get to put in one. Yeah. So bar nine. This is coming along very nicely now. Let's have a listen to everything from the start of the development. Actually, from the build up into it. Might change that to bump bump. Just have two G's. Da da da. Bump bump. Ba 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 ba. Dum dum. Yeah. So and also, maybe have something linking this in. Dump, bump, dump, dump, da, 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 dump, dump. Yeah, I'm just, 
it says the cello part I wasn't too happy with here. So maybe making this dump bump but uh same thing then for the ascending sequence here. Dum dum da 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 dum dum da 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 <laughs> Yeah. Bum bum ba. Is this something the articulation again? It's, maybe it's just too staccato -y. Um, Not a real word. But let's get rid of these ones. Dum dum da 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 da. Yeah. So it's almost like a bit, a bit of emphasis and then slurred. Dum dum. Same thing here, just get rid of the staccatos. Da da. Oh, not the whole bar. Bum bum ba ba da 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 dum dum. Da 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 dum. Yeah. Now, what will that sound like? This is the what I enjoy doing the most in, in these type of compositions is just messing around with stuff. Yeah. And I get to get rid of the da da dum. Yeah. That sounds better. Just a wee lead in. Da da dum bum. this but just m m now that I've got all this um yeah where are we gonna go well let's go to the subdominant F minor so we're in the dominant yeah G minor key here if we move into F minor just move everything down a bit but then swap them all over you know so each part will do something different and then we get use maybe the bars in between the homophonic part yeah, because that's what I want here. I want this section to be nothing but just pure homophonic textures, maybe just for a couple of bars. So we'll leave this bar and this bar blank. And we'll just take all of this stuff and move it into F minor. So what can we do? Um, well, let's take the orange part and swap it way up into the first violins. Except now, where to go? <laughs> yeah, it's a bit low. Um, let's push him up and then bring him down to F. So da da, that should be really a natural. Yeah, ba 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 bum 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 ba ba bum bum. Da 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 da. Yeah, that's gonna sound nice. Uh, let's take the well. What if that's what the violins were doing? What are they gonna do? Where's that gonna go this time? Just second violins, maybe. Okay, it's still in G minor, so we've got to move them. Um, well, this was the fifth in the key of G minor, so the fifth of F, I better write it in. F minor is what our key is here. Um, that would start then on C, so let's just drag all this down to C. Da 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 bum bum ba 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 bum 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 da 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 da
Yeah. Oh. It's just a wee bit... It's almost like a... Like some sort of hocket. <laughs> medieval hocket thing going on here. Um... If da, 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 da. <laughs> Let's keep it C's for now. We'll come back to that if we need to. Yeah, it's a wee bit more simpl simplified. Uh, what about the red part? Um, well, we've had that in the cello. We've had it in the violins. Now bring it into the... Um, yeah, bring it all into the viola. Now... This is in G, so we want everything to move down. Oh, da. Dum, bum, 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 mm. Hmm. Dum. Oh, that's why. Yeah. Okay, just keep it blue, just to remind ourselves. That's... I don't want to do... This is probably the only time I'll... Uh, this is the last time I'll do this, actually, you know, combining four things at once, and then we'll do something different. Uh, what are we left with here? The green stuff. The green stuff. Um, let's see. If we take this... And, okay, where is it going to go? Well, there's only one place left. There we go. Now, we want this to be on F. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> Um, that's the lowest note the cello can play, and it just, just about works. Uh, let's have a listen. <laughs> okay. Bomb, you get a bit more crisper in that low part. da 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 I wonder what would, um... Oh, I was going to put in pits to see what it's like, but no, it's just getting too different. Dum, 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 bum. Da-da-da-dum. Oops. Do, 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 do. Okay, let's see what else we can do here. This is going really well. Okay. That's as complicated as it's ever going to get in this composition. How are we going to get from this to this? How are we going to get to... from G minor to F minor? Because they're not really related to each other. Like one, two flats to four flats. Well, let's work at it. Let's, let's work at it from the back. We want everything just to be quavers. Okay, maybe a little bit of syncopation just to break it up so it's not too thick. Okay, so we're looking to hit F minor here, so we want like a, sort of like a C chord here. Maybe just descending down like we did here. Bum, 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 bum. What was that? Da 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 dum.
da, 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 da. Okay, so this is our C chord with a little descending scale. So C, if we just copy this up here just for now, move everything into a semi-decent range. And yeah, let's see what we can do. So C, E, and G. So C, maybe work through the E go. Well, we've got the F here. So the E natural's got to be up here. Da. Ba, 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 ba. So, and then maybe the E will C. And then the G's would be here. Actually, C. Well, it's only going up an octave. That's well. We'll put it up an octave anyway. Yeah, because then da -da 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 -da. yeah, goes straight into it, and then the G's here should go into the F's. Okay. Nice. Okay. C E G. So the chord that we could use here, maybe some chromatic chord like an augmented sixth. Yeah. So if you're GCSE, obviously you wouldn't be doing, you wouldn't be modulating this much anyway if you're in G, doing a GCSE composition. But um, yeah, this is probably could be like our German augmented sixth. So if we're in the key of F minor, that's the key that we're going to. Uh, we have chord five. C major chord and the German augmented sixth. Okay, so we've got da 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 da. So D flat to B natural will be our augmented sixth, but where is it going to go? Um. Well, actually, the most obvious place is next to the C. Then. Oops. So we've got our D flat, F, B natural, and I suppose our A flats then. Mm. Yeah, that's nice. <laughs> okay, that's going to be quite nice. Okay, so we've got our German augmented sixth chord. And we've got our D to A, which is a fifth, and C to E, which is a fifth. So again, you'd probably put this into C, E, G. I go, or even a one C chord. Da, 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 dum. Yeah. So this would be. Okay. Okay, yes, that work finally works. Okay, crisis averted. Now, we've got German augmented sixth chord should be followed by a 1C chord, so you don't end up with parallel fifths. If that All of that makes no sense and it's all gobbledygook, don't worry. We I do have videos um, on chromatic harmony as well if you want to know how to use these chords. Um, we, we didn't have to have German, actually. We could have just used French or Italian, but um, yeah... I just want to keep the full thick harmony here. Okay, so working backwards, what's going to come before that? So this is Philip. It's going to fill up these bars with something. Okay, so yeah, it's um pretty tricky getting from this G minor K 
key into this F minor key. But if we work backwards, we've got a wee bit of it already done here. Um, this chord five leading us to chord one. So a C major chord here. We've got a one C chord, so an F minor chord, second inversion here. So we've got our Cs, we've got our Cs, we've got our Fs, we've got our A flats. And here we've got this German augmented sixth chord, um, which actually sounds like um, a dominant seventh chord. You know, if you were to hear that being played, it's basically the... Da, 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 da. And in fact, if that was a dominant seventh chord, da, 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 dum, it would want to go to G flat. Do, 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 do. So here's the dominant seventh again. So that's if it was in the key of G flat uh, major, you'd have D flat, F, A flat, and C flat. But we're treating this actually as our B natural. This is the augmented sixth between D flat and B natural, and they're moving in opposite directions. So if that was a seventh, if that was C flat, it would want to fall down to a B flat. But because we're notating it as a B natural, it actually wants to rise up. So if you're a little unsure about augmented sixth chords, don't worry, I have a video on that as well on this channel, and it goes into this in quite a bit of detail. Um, so have we look at that video. Um, so yeah, that B natural resolves up to C, the D flat resolves down to C. So if we just listen just to that little bar on its own, it should hopefully sound like a German augmented sixth to a 1C, to a 5, to a 1. And you can hear how it wants to go bum bum. Yeah, in the F minor. Okay, so I was thinking then if that is our German augmented sixth chord. Now, if it was a dominant seventh chord, we can use um, chord seven from our old key, a G minor key, which would be our. F sharp, A and C. And in fact, we could make a dominant seventh chord of our old key of G minor. D, F sharp, A and C. Now, imagine if that was an augmented sixth chord in the key of G flat. <laughs> so this is your augmented sixth chord, which will want to progress to the... chord five, which is actually what's going to sound like afterwards, this German augmented sixth chord here. You've got your D flats, you've got your Fs, you've got your A flats, you've got, um, well, I suppose the B natural here would be here. Yeah, so we could actually do that. Uh, I've done that down here in the previous bar. In the previous bar, we've got our G minor chord. Mm. And the B flats in here in the second violin. Bum, 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 bum. So everything doing G's. And the fifth of the chord doubled in the viola and the violin. And the second violins provide the third here. I didn't want to have F sharp going up to B flat. You know, that F sharp needs to resolve to G. So then the B flat can come afterwards to give us the third of this chord. And here we've actually got this D, F sharp, A, and C. And that's our chord five in the key of G minor, our dominant seventh chord with the C's there. That actually could then, we could pretend that this chord is a German augmented sixth chord because German augmented sixth chords sound like dominant seventh chords. They're written, they're not written like that, but they sound like it. So here we're pretending that this dominant seventh chord is actually uh, a sounding German augmented sixth chord. And if that's the case, it always wants to move to a chord five. So if this chord, 
this dominant seventh chord if we treat it as a german augmented sixth chord it's going to want to resolve to And that is the next chord that comes over here, but now we're treating it as the German augmented sixth chord. So it sounds like a dominant seventh. So here we've got a German augmented sixth chord that we're pretending is a dominant seventh chord. And in the previous bar, we have a dominant seventh chord, which we're pretending is a German augmented sixth chord. So that's how we're modulating between these two um, keys so quickly um, so it sounds like each chord wants to this chord wants to progress to this chord if we treat the dominant seventh as a German augmented sixth it wants to progress to this chord and then this chord we're going to treat as a German augmented sixth chord in the key of F minor so the two keys are kind of linked together like this um, through these chromatic chords so Let's have a wee listen, um, probably from here. And we should be able to um, hear how this music modulates very quickly from G minor into F minor. Okay, so I might actually um, change just the rhythm of it. I like the harmony, but I'm going to change the rhythm of it a little bit. Da, 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 boom. I might just take the staccato off here. Da, da, da. Yeah. It's just a little bit. I want that cello to come out a little bit more. And I'm, I suppose the player will be sick of playing staccato up to this point. Yeah, okay, and we're going to do the same thing here as well in the next section. Um, so we have a bit of polyphonic chordal, polyphonic chordal thing going on. Um, so we'll, we'll come back to this um, again. So what I'll probably do is dump, 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 dump. Yeah, we've had that before, that bump, 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 bump. So let's take out. Yeah. Let's take those out. Bum bum ba bum bum and do it here again. So Yeah, and we'll do the same thing up here, but I might stress bum bum da dum dum. Um bum bum Yeah, I'd actually bring the cello back. Except Stress it out, bum bum da dum 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 da dum sort of thing. Um, let me see. Bum bum ba bum bum bum. Oh, I like that. Yeah. <laughs> so just that bar again. Let's listen to it a few times just to make sure. I'm going to do the same thing up here as well. So just take out these articulations and replace them. Oops, I think I did the wrong one there, didn't I? Yep. Bum, bum. This one. Stress those. Take out those ones. And those ones. Oh, I actually do really do like the sound of that. Let's, let's listen to it. Okay, so I want to get back to G minor. <laughs> um, so we've got our subdominant key 
check we've got our dominant key g minor and we've even got the dominant of that the d minor because that was the fugue part so this is a very sort of advanced i wouldn't expect it, um, many students to do anything this advanced um, but it's just to show you all the ideas or the ideas i think anyway that are possible when it comes to a development section changing the textures have different textures alternating back and forth bringing different ideas together from different parts of the first subject, second subject, bridge, amalgamating them, fragment, fragments of them, putting them into different keys and then into different instruments. So there's so many different things we've done here. Um, so let's see if we can continue with getting back. How are we going to get back to G minor? So we'll do the same thing over two bars. And I suppose then that's going to give us to here. And I want then my circle of fifths to start here. So I'll start, I'll put in some bar lines here just to remind me, this is where I want my circle of fifths to be around here somewhere because our recapitulation is coming up pretty soon. So yeah, we're going to have to do a couple of circle of fifths to get back to that, I think. I'll put that in as a destination first of all. So I'll put G here. Mm. Okay, so working backwards then, doing the same thing maybe? Um, well, let's just copy what we have here over these two bars. I'm just going to put them in here. Okay, so we want five of G minor this time, so I might have to move all of this up. Do, 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 into D. Yeah. Ba 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 bum. Always a good idea to either do this, like da 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 dum. If you're doing a one C five progression, have an octave leap, or if you just want to go five down to one, five. Da 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 dum. Good way of linking sections. Bum 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 bum. And I might just stress that with every single note there being accented. There we go. Bum, bum. Da, 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 dum. So we're going to need D, F sharps, and A's. Let me see, where can we put our D's? Well, if I move this up to a B, that would be a good place here for our D's. Um, bum, 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 bum. And our F sharps can come before this G. Put them in there. And our A's, I suppose, can come right next to this G. Got a bit the A natural there. Bum, 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 bum. Yeah, back to G. So we now know that's going to lead us back. Um, what chord could we have before this? So maybe the seven of five. Yeah, C sharps. So C sharps, E's, G's, and B flats. Ba, 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 ba. So maybe having the E's. Yeah. Here. Leading up to the F sharps, maybe having the C sharps here. C sharps, E's. We've already got the B flats here actually, so that's gonna work out quite well. C sharp E's and 
the G's. Well, yeah, that actually works out very well. So we've just changed the augmented sixth chord a little bit compared to what we had before. It was very similar to what we had with the German augmented sixth chord here before. Now, of course, here um, we were doing it in the key of F minor. And if we raise all of that um, so that we're going into G minor, it's very similar. So here we've got the, oops, and that's going to lead us to one, back to G minor. Nice. Okay. So what are we going to do just before that then? Maybe another diminished seventh chord. What have we got here? E, G, B, D. Yeah, if we make those Bs. B flats. So, so yeah, we've got the E's, we've got the G's, we've got the B flats, we've got the D flats. Um, actually, we might move those D flats down an octave so that they join up with the E naturals here. So D flat falls to E natural. Uh, the B flats in the first violin stay where they are. The G's in the viola stay where they are. And the E naturals fall down to C sharp. So we've got the diminished seventh chord here in G minor. Well, it's actually a secondary leading note chord, um, but it's acting as a diminished seventh of chord five to get us to chord five. And then we actually have, in the key of F minor, we've got our leading note chord here as well. So I've got another diminished seventh chord. It's always a nice way of modulating as well as, as using your chromatic harmonies, like Neapolitan chords and augmented sixth chords. And um, you can also modulate, of course, using diminished seventh chords, another type of chromatic chord. And they're very versatile like this, where you could just put them into different inversions, spell them slightly differently. And then all of a sudden you can treat them as a new chord in a new key. So here we've got E, G, B flats and D flats. Yeah, that's going to sound nice and smooth. So what chord should we have before that? Well, probably the F minor chord. You need a chord one when you're near a leading note chord like this. And also that's what this melody wanted to go to anyway. The only problem is everyone's doing F. <laughs> okay, so we need to thicken this chord up a little bit. So we could have the A's. I don't want the A flats here. Well, I've actually, we put the A flats here, going up to B flats, going up to B flats, going up to D. Yeah, because that melody line or that violin line is rising anyway. So we might have to just change this ever so slightly. Maybe having it the other going the other way. Da da da, leading up to it. Yeah. Okay. We're we're getting there. Um, I might change the articulation here. Yeah. Okay. Bum bum ba bum. One two three. One two three four. One two three four. Let's have a listen. Um, yeah, okay, let's have a listen to the whole development that we've done so far.
Yeah, okay. So Circle of Fifth's time. <laughs> um Yeah, we're near the end of this actually, so Circle of Fifths. Okay. What have we haven't used yet? Um Yeah, the triplets and the dotted rhythms, this stuff here. We haven't used that. And we'll try and get that in. <laughs> and well, we've kind of used it. Well, the triplets and the dotted rhythms there are similar. Ba, ba, bum, bum, ba, ba, ba. Oh, yes. Ba, 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 ba. Um, da, ba, bum, bum. Let's take that and put that into G minor. Where do we end up? We do that. Uh, give it to the cello because the cello's been working really hard. Um, give it a nice melody here. Octave of Philp, I think. Mm -hmm. Octave higher. Why is that double flat? Anyway. I might change my mind about that, actually. Okay, well, yeah, we we'll, might we do the circle of fifths as such here. Because um, because if that was going to move as a circle of fifths, it would be G, then it should have really gone to C, I suppose. And then F, and B flat. What happens if it we do? Let's, let's try it with a circle of fifths first. Um... To see what it's get an idea what it sounds like. So G down to C down to F. Um F down to B flat. And B flat then to E flat. And that's usually where we're going to, usually when you break the circle of fifths, it's when you're hitting a two, five, one to get you back to G minor again. So if we do that here, we're going to be breaking it on the. That should be. Diminished seventh will give us this. Um, what does that sound like? It's actually all right, but might do it. Yeah, I actually prefer. Let me see. Ba, ba, ba. Yeah, and then we'll do something there. Okay, so just mark that off. Um, what were the other two rhythms again? Triplets and du -du -du and dotted rhythms. Maybe put the tri the triplets. We'll put the triplets in the cello. Just tri copy that triplet rhythm. They're a wee bit tricky writing triplets in music scores, so it's always a good idea if you write it out once to copy and paste it somewhere. Um, 
Okay. So maybe give it to the viola because the cello is actually busy doing something. So. Radio, that's the triplet rhythm. I don't want to do overdo that too much. Um, in the other part, I'll just leave it in the violas. Maybe the violins then could do the dotted rhythm. Bum ba dum, ba bum, da dum. Okay, let's see. Bum ba bum. And I might make this quite crisp as well, just so that we can hear the ba ba bum in the violas. Okay, so what chord is this again? G minor. So we're going to have, well, maybe just B's, G's, G's, G's. Yeah, B. Bum, ba, bum. And make them staccato. Maybe even, is there a staccatissimo maybe? Dum da dum ba bum That's actually nicer. Da dum da dum Okay, so we'll use this rhythm. Ready up. Okay, so maybe then doing this in thirds would be best. What does that sound like? Yeah, that's nice. Just keep that going the whole way, I think. Yeah. See what it sounds like, the whole thing together. Um, <laughs> yeah, so is there anything else that we've... Oh, um... Da -da 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 -da. We did have that over here, didn't we? Yeah. But we didn't have the imitation idea of it. Well, we're bringing it a little. Da -da 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 -da. A little bit. Where could we put it? Let's see if we zoom in a little bit. Okay, what about here? Bum, 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 bum. <laughs> really squeaky viola there. <laughs> Okay, yeah, as a sort of a rising idea, maybe I'll give the second violin to do it. Because the. Yeah. Okay, yeah, we'll keep it higher, who cares? Um, if it's just overlapping for a second. And let's hear that. Yeah, maybe giving the viola back in there. Did 
Nice. Might do that again, that idea. Um, what we could do is just gently, a little trick, gently speed it up. I wouldn't recommend doing this this far into your composition, you know, changing the entire speed of it. But, you know, usually Allegro is around about 120. We're just going to put it to about 124. And let's listen to see if that does that kill the ideas. Take it out. Not really. It's the same sort of speed, kind of. It is obviously slightly faster, but that should give us a wee bit more room in our development section. Might do something similar again. Um, yeah, having like four different things going on, but not as complicated as it was here. Maybe just a descending sequence or something, and then repeating these ideas, but mixing everything around, like giving the this idea, ba 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 ba. Give that to the first violin, because I don't think it's ever had that. No, the violas had it, the cellos now had it. Yeah, so the violin should probably have it as well. So what could we do? Well, let's see. Maybe add something from the blue. What about this? Add that in here. So obviously this should be in. G. Now, obviously, the F sharp had to resolve to the G here, and the A going A natural to B flat. What about the green? Is there anything from the green? Dump, dump, bump, bump. Da 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 dum. Da 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 dum. Mm -hmm. Just bring that over again. You can see I'm not really coming up with anything. I haven't come up with anything new. Um, it's just taking stuff we've already done. Yeah, I don't really want to emphasize those octaves. Da ba 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 ba. I'll do staccato and something from orange co country <laughs> maybe from the actual development itself I'll just copy this idea well if we treat it to a descending sequence da -da 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 -dum -bum -bum. so let's move everything down Slightly changing it a little, but you know, it's not much of a difference really. Um, so how are we going to get to this, this FAC chord? Maybe we're rising up to the F. Yeah. Yeah, we could go into B flat major here. We'll have to figure out a way how to get from B flat back to C minor because our recap is coming up. Okay, we'll add a couple of more bars in here. Um, let's see, add another, I don't know, 10 bars or something. Just to give us a bit more room. Yeah, this is where we could have the bum, this idea that was in the cello, but we're now going to put it in the violin. We're going to swap all the stuff around. So 
We'll put it up in the violin, except up high. And one, two, three. Mm, it's a wee bit high. <laughs> Find an octave. Ba 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 ba. So we could put another little double bar line in here, and uh, just to say this is our new section. Wow, this development's really flying now. Um, so let's see if we put in the triplets in the bass this time. Now the inner voices are going to be doing these da dums, da dums, bum ba bum, ba bum. Da dum, same thing here. Yeah, this is actually working out much better than the circle of fifths. Um, yeah, there's enough harmonic progression going on here. There's enough. It uh, definitely sounds like these chords want to move to where they're going, so it's a very strong harmonic progression. Now, how are we going to end it? Well, we haven't really had this dum da dum da dum da dum this continuous dotted rhythm, you know, dotted quaver, semi quaver. Bum, ba, bum, ba, bum. So we might take that to end it. <laughs> Maybe having it inverted this time. That'll do, I think. Do 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 do. Yeah, have maybe the same type of rhythm going on in the cello. I probably maybe want to put these an octave lower just so that it doesn't distract from the melody. Which means maybe putting these an octave lower. Uh, I'll be fine. Let's get rid of this stuff. Okay, we need to get back to the recapitulation now as we're kind of running out of space and time here. But let's have a wee listen just to what we've had, the whole development, in fact, what we've all done today. Whew. It's a wee bit jarring there. Yeah, it should have gone. I think it just would be better if it just goes to B flat using the same idea rather than moving to B flat with completely new ideas. So let's establish the key first before moving into this. Oh, 
Oh, that does sound better. Okay, let's go back from here. Yeah. You know, it'd be nice to have some sort of little run, da, 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 but we kind of got the cello doing its own thing here. Boom. Do, 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 do. Maybe just change, just ever so slightly change. Yeah, what, we're, what we have here. Okay, let's get rid of that. No. So how do I get from B flat into C minor? Okay, let me think. B flat. Okay, so we're trying to get into key of C minor. Okay, so it's chord five is GBD, it's augmented sixth. Let's see what it sounds like if we could squish them in here. Um, well, we could keep the D, make it a French one. Yeah. Here we go. That actually does work. Okay, it's, it's a bit jarring there, but we can always tidy that up later. Uh, let's have a listen just to run into it. Yeah, bam, 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 bam. Get us back into C minor. So, probably a lot of one C chords here. Um. Yeah, bring. Let's bring back that da dum, da dum. This rhythm here, ba bam. Yeah, we'll change it slightly. We might have da da dum, da da dum, da da dum, bum, bum. Okay, how are we gonna squish this in? Ba ba bum. Ba -ba -bum. Ba -ba -bum. So the dumbs are on the beat. Da -da -dum. That's actually quite tricky to think of that rhythm. Da da dum, da da dum, da da dum, da da dum, da da. Okay, so ba ba bum. So it should be using the tonic and dominant harmonies almost exclusively here. So all of these rhythms should follow each other. That'll be our G, B, D, F. So it's our dominant seventh of our tonic, our original tonic going all the way back to the exposition. 
So we haven't come across C minor in quite a while. That should be our one C chord. And the same thing here. Exactly the same bar, just basic repetition here. Dum, da da dum. Dominant seventh, bum, bum, bum. One C. And then ending on five. So it just brings that huge development section to a close where you have this sort of dominant pedal idea going on, almost a, a pure pedal idea going on in the bass. Let's have a wee listen. Um, I think we'll have a listen just to the development. As you can see, this is what we were doing today. From here all the way back to here. So when you consider that our exposition is only this, you can see how important developing your ideas. You get so many more marks for being able to take your ideas and go with and develop them because our reca recapitulation is going to be more or less with some very important differences. It's going to be more or less the same as the exposition, this last part that we'll be doing in our next video. But let's have a listen then to the development. ending yeah okay so we'll finish off the rest of it in our next video